Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. Welcome to interstitiallungdisease.info. In this episode, I'd like to answer a question that I received that is quite interesting related to acid reflux, so gastroesophageal uh, reflux disease, and pulmonary fibrosis and how these two relate to each other. Now, this is a fairly tricky one to answer because there's actually quite a lot of research going on trying to find out which direction this uh, relationship is going. And what I mean by that is because Generally, we know that if we do suffer with acid reflux, so acid coming up from our stomach, going up maybe into the airways, or maybe there's a little bit of vapor that's acidic that we inhale into the lungs, that can potentially worsen the scarring. Now, at the same time, we need to understand that people who have scarred lungs, they have hardened lungs. So when they do deep breathing, when they they try to expand the lungs, that pulls a little bit at, at the rest of the organs within the, the chest cavity and, you know, the abdomen. So there may be a little bit of a re of reflux coming up as a result of having pulmonary fibrosis. And this has been noticed in several other conditions as well. So for example, in asthma, this is another situation in which gastroesophageal reflux so acid reflux interacts with the condition. So asthma can be worse when we suffer with acid reflux. But at the same time, the medications that we take for asthma, so some of the inhalers can worsen the acid reflux. So it's a little bit of a vicious circle. And I suspect personally that that's what's going on in pulmonary fibrosis as well. It's a little bit tricky to understand exactly whether the reflux is causing the scarring or worsening the scarring. Potentially, yes because it may lead to more irritation, inflammation within the lungs. But at the same time, it's probably not the main driving factor. So it's, I'm sorry, this is a bit of a non-answer, but I'm trying to try to tease out what's going on and what I've read about in the literature, in the medical literature. And I think there's quite a bit of controversy yet. Now, the guidelines that we have at the moment suggest that when someone who has pulmonary fibrosis and acid reflux, then if the the acid reflux is present. So in a person who has pulmonary fibrosis, there is a recommendation to prescribe anti-acid medication. So for example, protein pump inhibitors or such as lansoprazole or meprazole, things like that, to try to reduce the acid reflux. Also, there's a discussion about non-pharmacological, non-medication, non-drug therapies for acid reflux. Because we can, uh, we know that there's an association between the two conditions, pulmonary fibrosis and acid reflux, but treating the acid reflux is not always that easy. And you can imagine if you're taking an antiacid tablet, you're just basically reducing the uh, acidity of the reflux, but the reflux can still be there. So it's a little bit tricky. That's when we need to consider other forms of therapy. Now, what we would recommend generally is, uh, in terms of non-pharmacological, non-drug interventions, first of all, to try to... Uh, figure out what is causing the reflux as part of the diet. So everyone is different in this regard. So some people may have a diet that's more uh, spicy in nature. So I don't know if you like eating curries that are really spicy or some kind of jalapenos in your diet or things like that. That may worsen the acid reflux for some people. For some people, they've been eating that all their lives and they're fine with it. It doesn't really cause a problem. For some people, it could be dairy products for that are causing a little bit of acidity. It could be alcohol. It could be fizzy drinks. It could be a lot of things, coffee, tea. So it depends from person to person to try to figure out what's causing the acid reflux. And you can generally feel the heartburn generally when you're having the wrong type of meal for you. That would be the first thing, to try to adjust your diet based on your preferences, based on what's causing the, the acid reflux in your case. The other thing would be to try to avoid big meals before going to bed because gravity does play a role. So if you're lying flat in bed, obviously, you know, the, the acid reflux finds it easier to come up. So that's one, one thing that we, we could consider. Sometimes people have found that sleeping on the left side does help sometimes to, to keep the, the, acid, the stomach contents within the stomach. Um, this is to do with the anatomy of the stomach and the curvature of the stomach. So sometimes people have found that sleeping on the left-hand side does help a little bit. But generally, what we would recommend is just raising the torso a little bit during sleep. Now, if you're just using pillows, that can help. But eventually, people end up just sliding down and, you know, having a, a bent neck, but the torso is still flat, so the acid can still come up. So one way to combat that would be to maybe put something under the end of the mattress to try to lift the, the end of the mattress a little bit to, to give it a bit of a slope. It doesn't have to be a lot. It could be like 10, 
15 degrees, something like that, to try to keep the, the reflux within the stomach. So uh, making sure that the diet's on point and it's not really worsening the acid reflux, avoiding big meals before going to bed so that you're going to bed with an empty stomach rather than a full stomach, uh, maybe avoiding alcohol before you go to bed, that could help as well. Maybe raising the the end of the mattress a little bit or potentially sleeping on the left side, that could be things that you could try, but it doesn't work for everyone in the same way. The other thing, the final thing I would say is if you are carrying a little bit of extra weight, that would be something to look into because obviously if you're having a lot of fatty tissue on the stomach, that will push down on the uh, on the abdomen and maybe push some of the the stomach contents upwards into the esophagus and giving you more reflux. So of course, this is a tricky one. You can't fix it overnight, but maintaining a healthy weight is quite important. And I don't want to to blame anyone who's, you know, who's uh, this is not to blame and shame. So everyone can struggle with various uh, problems health wise. You know, you may not be able to exercise as much when you're having fibrosis. So it's, it's complicated. That's why I would always suggest to talk to your healthcare team to try to figure out in your case, What's the best strategy? What's the most you can do to, to combat acid reflux, to combat heart disease, uh, lung disease outside of the pulmonary fibrosis space, to have the right optimal treatments for pulmonary fibrosis in your case. So it's a very nuanced decision on a case by case basis. And I apologize that this is not giving you a very straight answer. But again, at the same time, I'm not your doctor. I cannot know your full situation all the details. I'm a person on the internet who you're watching. I'm hoping this is providing you some information and a good baseline for discussion with your doctor, but that's where you really should be going for. But I would say in terms of acid reflux, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, it can be associated with pulmonary fibrosis. It can worsen the pulmonary fibrosis potentially. There is still research going on into whether it's the acid causing the fibrosis or whether the fibrosis and the changes in the lungs are worsening the acid reflux in people who already have it it's not entirely clear to what extent this association is driving the, the scarring. There is research in this space, but the current guidelines that we have is that if you do suffer with significant acid reflux, that we try and treat that. And that can be through medication, like I said, anti-acid medication, and also the non-pharmacological interventions that I mentioned before. So hopefully this was a starting point for a discussion, maybe with your physician to look into it a little bit deeper. If you have further questions, I will try to answer them as best as I can, but sometimes I'm finding it very difficult to give you a non-nuanced answer and a very straight answer. This is what you should be doing. And I don't think I should be doing that because it's probably Probably not ethical because I don't know your situation. So hopefully it was insightful to some extent. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in future videos. All the best and good health.